Veterans Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Good evening Bahamas, I'm Kelsey Johnson. Welcome to Sports Tuesday. The current Bahamas Olympic Committee administration is coming under fire as the race for presidency and all other vacant posts heats up. The second consecutive term for both incumbents, President Wellington Miller and Secretary General Romel Knowles has come to an end, but both are seeking to be returned on Thursday when election takes place at 7 p.m. at the Paul Farquharson Center. From Romel Knowles and our team, we're not going to get into a fight about, sure, did we do everything right? I can, I, I, I can assure you, no, we've made some mistakes. Were we dedicated and loyal to our membership? Very much so. We're not going to get into a political fight or a political battle in the press or anywhere else for that matter when, when it comes to the Olympic brand and the Olympic movement in the Bahamas. Um, we're, I just don't have the aptitude for that and my colleagues just don't have the aptitude for it. We're prepared to sit down from our members, um, let them tell us what our fault was, where they would like for us to see us improve, uh, and if they would like to reelect us, they have options. They can say, no, we don't want you running the Olympic affairs of the country anymore. And we'll accept our fate and move on. I mean, and we don't need, let me make this very clear to my colleagues in, in sports. As the BOC, we have, a rep, we, have a, I mean, we have an awesome responsibility to do the right thing. It seems to me that every four years we get in this turmoil, this fighting. And, um, you know, for sports administrators, professionals that they are, and that we are the leaders of sports organization, we ought to be able to sit down and come to conclusion intelligently for the best of this organization. The, Romel Knowles don't own it. Wellington Miller don't own it. We are uh, subject to the wishes of our member federations. One of the biggest questions surrounding the upcoming elections on Thursday is who is eligible to vote, especially now that there's been an increase in sports that will take place at the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. Here's who got the nod and what will they be contesting? Wellington Miller is hoping to be returned as president. He is being challenged by Mike Sands and Romel Knowles, who was nominated by Wellington Miller. Romel Knowles is also on the list with Secretary General. Once again, Wellington Miller nominated him. Diane Miller, Tracy Alkidis, and Deron Donaldson have also thrown their names in the hat for the position. Donaldson is a former vice president who is also seeking the assistant treasurer position. There are a few new faces vying for the assistant secretary general position. Those include Pauline Davis Thompson, Karine Catherine Ramsing Pierre, Omar Archer, and Oreo Wood. I can't tell you, Lynn, I can tell you that from our perspective, um, we've reached, we treat everybody equally, um, whether it's feder whether the Federation of Athletics, that's a very big federation, or the Federation of Gymnastics, or the Federation of Swimming. They, we see them as an equal member to, say, um, handball, or archery, or fencing. Or judo. I mean, and when we brought judo on, um, they were unknown. Judo was an unknown sport in the Bahamas. And now they're actually winning international medals. Uh, I remind you about the Commonwealth Games, the fact that they won the very first two medals um, for the Bahamas at the Commonwealth Junior Commonwealth Games, or the Youth Commonwealth Games. So that's our mandate. That's what we try to do. Former president of the B3A's Mike Sands explains why he wants to head the BOC, the highest sporting organization in the country. I also commit to be able to meet with member federations on a regular basis, notwithstanding that those member federations will have, in some instances, members on the executive board. But unfortunately, all federations cannot be represented on the executive board, and so therein lies the weakness of being able to not communicate what is happening or what should be happening uh, with the sporting bodies throughout the course of the year and the ensuing years. And so this will also form part of our strategic plan going forward to enhance the visibility and to support the growth and the development of the sports. When you refer to the constitution of the BOC, it speaks very specifically to be able to provide assistance, administrative support, uh, and that also includes you know, ensuring that coaches are certified um, and providing that type of support. 
There's a new sheriff in town and he's in charge of the National Sports Authority. Vaughn Roberts oversees the daily business of sports in partnership with the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, the Ministry of Tourism and the Quelly Technical Assistance Team. That's uh, very exciting, you know, it's probably been about three or four months since I've been the chairman of the National Sports Authority. I mean, I think uh, coming in, what I realized very quickly is we have a tremendous set of assets here. Um, uh, and, and so in a way, I feel quite, quite lucky to be in a position where the assets are already in place. They're world class, sort of the best in the region. And we've had over the last few years a number of uh, key international events here. And so we just need to find how we find out and figure out how we build on that. So we've been spending a lot of time thinking about sort of maintenance of the facilities, but also how we program the facilities in a way that makes it more, makes them more uh, significant uh, in the role, uh, in a role uh, in sports development, right? So kind of making sure that we provide access to the facilities for uh, all of the residents of New Providence and indeed the Bahamas. Um, but also thinking about how we leverage these facilities to attract, um, you know, significant events that can perhaps draw tourists to the, to the Bahamas as well. Founder of the Freedom Found Baseball League, Greg Burrows, is not calling foul ball, but says he's out of the game when it comes to the construction of the 4,500-seat arena that's the Andre Rogers National Baseball Stadium. The answer to that is no. You know, I, have, I had no um, contact with anybody who involved from the government. I had no contact with anybody, no. The uh, blueprint, the, the way forward for the new stadium, when you guys were in power, uh, did you guys have a real solid plan, when I say plan, financing to back, uh, to complete the stadium like this? Well, um, as far as I know, uh, yes, we had everything that we, uh, we need to, to complete the stadium. Um, but you know, most of that would have come out of the general fund, so um, that would have been um, managed by the Ministry of, of Work. So I don't know. I don't know exactly where they are right now. I can be honest with you, and I just hope and pray that um, the minister, the Minister of Works, and the Minister of Sports get everything started very soon. St. Augustine's College with wins in three divisions of the BAISS softball championship. Julian Gibson has the call once again. Kelsey, let's start with the Junior Boys Championship game. Sock taking on NCA. Sock taking game one, six to one. I just feel as if we came out hitting, and that's what it came off with it. They ain't hitting the ball. I, I, I'm trying to do my best to pitch. You know, they had some hits off me, and I ain't going to run on about the hits they, that they had. But I still think we should have scored more runs and hit the ball more. Let's move to the Junior Girls Championship game. Sock with the cheerleaders. Sock S A C Q C Q C comments for the cheerleaders getting it on. This game would go right down to the wire. Sock Junior Girls holding off Queens College seven to five to take game one. We just kept on fighting and we we executed what we did in practice and just put it all on all on field. But our plan was to pitch strikes because strikes you run the game and you have to catch the ball. So all the outs and all the hits made us in the game. Sock not done yet. Their senior boys. But it hit the cover off the softball. They simply blasted Nassau Christian Academy. Final score, 14 to 4. I wasn't able to swing the ball because I just repeated my shoulder the last game. So my team came out for me and they did the job. Normally we just practice love, but we know Kenwin was coming out with a good arm and we just had to practice for that and that's what we did in live, live BP. Now for Nassau Christian Academy head coach. He said that his team left their game at the school. Somehow, some way that whenever the ball game start, the confidence goes somewhere, and then the guys just become flat, and therefore we just couldn't get anything going at all. Specifically, my pitching, he was pitching a lot of high balls, and then he's trying to control the pitching, so therefore he slows down, and then, then Sack is making contact. Fielders are not feeding the balls properly, and as such, Everything just go haywire, and unfortunately, we just lost the game. Now, in the senior championship game, game one, Queens College taking on Sack. It sounds like a scorch record, but Sack had four teams in the big dance. But this game would not belong to Sack. Queens College winning the ball game five to two. Comments take game one. For me personally, I feel really good in myself because this is the first hit I've actually hit for season. So for me to hit that, that really brought encouragement for my team. For us to pull it off, Sock really played an excellent game. 
but I guess we wanted it more. So I'm pleased with their girls' performance. They played well. They played fundamental softballs and they were really confident. They wanted it and our pitcher played her A game. The batters, the bats were coming around and we did a very good job. Game 2 and all series will resume on Wednesday. Reporting for ZNS Total Sports, I am Julian Gibson. Thank you so much, Julian. Well, that's all the time we have for sports. I'm Kelsey Johnson.